Ice baths and cryotherapy is all the craze right now. Athletes and avid gym goers are using cold exposure after exercise as a tool to speed up recovery and improve performance. So in this video, I'll present the very nuanced and sometimes conflicting research behind ice baths to help you understand if this type of therapy is best suited for your sport and training. When it comes to any kind of athletic progress, whether you want to gain muscle like this guy, or you want to run like Bolt, or work out like Rich Froning, you need to do two things to progress. First, you need to stimulate your body through training, and you must then recover from that training. The relationship and balance between these variables can be illustrated in an upside down new graph. So the Y axis represents performance, and the X axis can be split into three sections. Section one presents a scenario where athletes may be under training, as well as taking too many rest days. On the opposite end of the spectrum, the athletes may be overtrained and under-recovered. And obviously the middle section represents a balanced scenario of training and recovery. This is the sweet spot, which can clearly be seen by the peak in performance level. However, to complicate matters even more, if athletes want to increase their performance even further, they would need to train more and recover faster. It is for this reason that so much research and effort is spent around trying to speed up recovery. Otherwise, a failure to recover fast enough from additional training would just send the athlete back into an overtrained state, where their performance would again drop and their risk for injury increases. The quest for a speedier recovery has been serviced using methods like massage, compression outfits, electromuscular stimulation, and saunas. Each of these protocols try and tackle recovery in a slightly different way, but the underlying theme is to reduce inflammation and the consequent soreness you get post-exercise. Cold water immersion does a stellar job combating this issue. This is born out of research. Reducing inflammation by means of cold water immersion has been found to enable athletes to tackle their next activity with greater ease. For example, in one study it was found to significantly improve the performance of cyclists who had back-to-back -back races on the same day. So to give some context, two groups of trained cyclists were each made to race in two time trial events in hot and humid temperatures with a short rest in between races. During the interval, however, one group was allowed to take a 5-minute dip in 14 degrees Celsius cold water baths. The results for the first race showed no significant difference in performance between the two groups, which was expected as the riders were all pretty evenly matched. In the second race, however, the groups who had taken the five-minute cold water bath during the rest period performed significantly better than the control group, who took no additional recovery measures. The higher performing cyclist also rated their perceived level of exertion lower than the poorer performing group. These were interesting results, but the conditions were highly specific and thus do not necessarily relate to typical training days. The long-term benefits of reducing acute inflammation post-exercise is also questionable. Acute inflammation is a necessary part of the musculoskeletal repair process. If cold water immersion is therefore part of an athlete's regular post-workout regime, their long-term adaptation and muscle growth can be negatively affected by curbing these natural biological processes. Findings have been recorded in multiple medium-term studies showing these adverse effects of consistent and continuous cold water immersion. So far it seems that cold water immersion may be a useful tool during multi-event competitions, but not consistently after everyday training. However, before we jump to conclusions, let's take a deeper dive into the research. When someone's core body temperature is rapidly decreased, using ice baths or cryotherapy for example, cold shock proteins are released. Cold shock proteins have a dual benefit on the body. Firstly, these proteins have muscle protecting abilities, which have been found to be essential to hibernating animals, who are inactive for many months during the winter. Secondly, cold shock proteins also upregulate fat metabolism, which is also the primary fuel source during hibernation. The effects of cold shock proteins may be beneficial to endurance athletes, especially those who are ketogenic and heavily rely on fat metabolism as their primary fuel source. The release of these proteins can also be of interest to athletes who are unable to train because of injury, sickness, travel, or any other reason and want to limit muscle wasting. It is also important to note that for the release of cold shock proteins to occur, there needs to be a minimum of a 2 degree Fahrenheit drop in core body temperature. So the duration and intensity of the cold exposure needs to be sufficient for these benefits to occur. 
Melatonin, the sleep hormone, can also help in the production of cold shock proteins, which suggests that cold water immersion may be best timed at night when cortisol, the antagonistic hormone, is low and melatonin is naturally elevated. Timing cold water immersion in this way may even improve sleep quality, which can further improve recovery from exercise. Extreme cold exposure increases the size of the mitochondria, which are engines within muscle tissue responsible for aerobic respiration. Over time, if this increase in aerobic capacity continues, the fiber makeup of muscles will also shift towards more slow twitch type 1 fibers rather than their faster type 2 counterparts. This change in muscle fibers is matched well with the previously explained upregulation in fat metabolism, as type 1 fibers have the metabolic flexibility to use both glucose and fat as their primary energy sources. These findings relate well with studies which found that endurance athletes had performance enhancing effects from regular cold water immersion, while strength athletes' performances were hampered. Therefore, athletes who are focused on building strength and aerobic capacity utilizing predominantly type 2 muscle fibers are better suited as using an active recovery protocol post-workout. Okay, so let's do a final recap and provide some conclusions from this literature review. Number one, cold water immersion may be useful during multi-event competitions, especially in hot conditions. Two, Cold exposure improves fat metabolism and increases the development of type 1 muscle fibers, which is beneficial for aerobically biased endurance athletes, especially those on a ketogenic diet. 3. Based on the previous point, strength and power athletes or those interested in building the maximum amounts of muscle mass may not benefit from continuous cold exposure, as long-term adaptation, glucose metabolism, and fast twitch muscle development will get retarded. 4. During times of inactivity, such as when an athlete is injured, cold shock proteins released through cold exposure may prevent muscle wasting. And 5. Cold water immersion can improve sleep quality and thus could be a useful nighttime ritual. This final point could possibly even benefit strength athletes and bodybuilders if cold water immersion is timed correctly. However, more research needs to be done on this topic. I was, however, able to take the studies which showed the best results and averaged out their methods. For cold exposure to be effective, according to the research, you need to submerge your body up to the neck in water that is between 10 and 15 degrees Celsius and for long enough to ensure a core body temperature drop of at least 2 degrees Fahrenheit. That should take about 5 minutes or more to achieve. And that's that. If you found this video informative and would like to see more science-based health and fitness content from us in the future, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. You can also follow us on our social media platforms and visit exercisinghealth.net. But until next time, keep on exercising your health. Cheers.